Hey everybody and welcome back to Sweatpants BI. We're ready for part two of our toy company sales report. In the first video, I walked through, you know, looking at the data set, doing our data model, putting together our initial layout, bringing in our background images. Frankly, I took care of a lot of the boring stuff in the first video. In the next video, and of course the rest of the videos uh, moving forward, we're going to be utilizing a little bit more DAX. We're going to be actually designing our data visuals. We're going to be kind of tying everything together. And ultimately, all of this is going to build up to a somewhat more advanced DAX application where I'm going to teach you how to do some very rudimentary forecast forecasting slash projecting of sales revenue based on year-to-date performance. Uh, to try to track, you know, whether or not we're going to hit a hypothetical sales goal or not. I'm really excited to show you that part, but again, there's going to be a little bit more advanced DAX there. So in this video, we're going to kind of build out uh, uh, and lay the foundation for the DAX to come by building some of our initial uh, DAX performance measures uh, for our sales data and just laying out all of our data visuals. So really excited for this video. Let's go ahead and jump back into things. So for this particular demo, we are actually going to be writing some DAX of increasing complexity. I'm going to be walking through all of that DAX step by step. I don't think that it's anything you can't handle. I'm going to uh, even write some fairly inefficient DAX uh, so that you can actually see step by step what everything is doing to the best of my abilities. Um, but because of that, we're going to need to make sure that we're very, very organized with our DAX. So before we start building a bunch of data visuals from our data, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to set up some measure tables to store our DAX measures. I cannot recommend this enough. Yes, there are technically pros and cons to using measure tables as opposed to storing your measures in the tables you know that they, that they reference. I prefer to use measure tables. I use measure tables on every single Power BI report that I build. Uh, and I just organize those measure tables different ways depending on the specific scenario for which I'm building a report. But uh, let's go ahead and first, if you're wondering, you know, well, Sean, I don't even know what a measure table is. Let's start there. Let's start by just building our first measure table. We're just going to go up here to enter data and where it asks us to create a table and you know we could manually enter in as much data as we want to we're actually not going to do anything at all other than uh, just call this table measures 01 I'm having trouble typing today we're going to go ahead and load that with no data into it because this table is not actually going to need any data it's just going to be a table that we store our measures in the reason that I put an underscore in front of measures is just so it pops right here to the top of our model. And the first measure that I'm going to write is uh, just one of the core measures that we're going to need. And that is a revenue measure. And this revenue measure is just going to sum the total revenue uh, column from our uh, sales table. And once I have that, I, all I need to do is right click on column one and hide that column. And immediately you notice the little calculator that appear, appears here next to my uh, measures 01 table, replacing the table icon that normally ap appears. That indicates that this table has now been converted to a measures table. Let's create just a couple more because we could use them later on in the development of this report. And so I'm just going to call the second table measures 02. I'm going to load this in. And I'm going to uh, just add another measure to this. Let's go ahead and just call this cost. And I'm going to sum my total cost column. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this. Now I've converted my other measures table to a measure, or my other table to a measures table. And let's go ahead and just add a third measures table. You know where this is going, measures 03, load it in. And I'm actually just going to put a placeholder here. I don't really have a game plan yet for these measure tables. I just 
anticipate needing them at some point. So let's call this placeholder. And you can put, you know, something like this. You can just call the blank function, which is what I do sometimes. Either one's fine. We just want a measure that doesn't actually have anything in it. It's just a placeholder. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you one more thing about navigating these measure tables real quickly. I'm going to add another placeholder measure. And I'm going to show you how to move a measure to a different table. So let's go ahead and grab this cost measure, which is maybe one of our core measures. And let's go ahead and go up here to table tools and um, or measure tools rather. And let's go ahead and move this measure from measures 02 to measures 01 by clicking on measure tools, home table and switching this measure to this table. I'm going to go ahead real quickly and just calculate some additional uh, core measures that I anticipate needing. Let's go ahead and grab profit. Let's go ahead and grab units. This is the easiest DAX that we're going to write all day. And let's go ahead and make sure that uh, Power BI is appropriately recognizing everything. I did notice that it was automatically picking up on currency for cost, profit, and revenue, but it also said, uh, oh, well, that's because I called the wrong field. Okay, so now we have sales units, but you can see, of course, the number of units or quantity that we sold, that's not currency. So let's go ahead and go up here to our measure tools again. Let's change the format just to whole number make sure that we have commas here. We can go ahead and adjust our card to none. Looks like commas are there. We're good. Okay, so we've at least got some very, very basic measures uh, already written. We've got some measure tables established. Uh, now we can actually start to get into the fun stuff. And in the, in the next uh, series of videos, we're going to be just, you know, knocking out some of our, uh, you know, very basic Power BI visuals. And then we're going to just progressively add more complex and challenging visualization scenarios on top of that so that this uh, sales report is going to be something really, really cool by the time that we're done. So now that we have all of the basic stuff set up, we're going to go ahead and actually start building our main page for our toy company sales report. And since this first page has the title at the top, 2023 Performance, that is really what we're going to be focusing on here. We're going to be using this first page to track revenue for this company in 2023. And in order to make this meaningful to someone who might potentially be interested in this sales report, we're going to want to track 2023 sales against the previous year's sales. And we're also going to want to be able to track 2020 three sales against some sort of hypothetical target. Uh, you know, every company each year has, you know, some goal where they would like to see their revenue reach. And even though we don't have a target as a part of this data set, and we don't have real stakeholders since this is just a tutorial, we're just going to make up a goal. But first, you know, let's go ahead and start laying out our DAX measures. I'm not really a person to format as we go. The first thing that we're going to focus on is just getting all of our calculations, um, you know, together and then just making some very, very basic data visuals. And then in the next video, we'll apply some formatting and make this thing look really slick. But the first thing that we're going to do, uh, the, the most important measure that we're going to want to calculate first is just year to date revenue. We don't want to just, you know, compare 2023 revenue to 2022 revenue, which would be very simple because 2022 revenue is already complete. You know, reasonably 2022 revenue is going to be higher than 2023 revenue because in this data set, 2023 isn't even finished. Uh, to show you what I mean, I'm just going to quickly throw a, a matrix onto my report here. I'm going to add my month short column as the rows. I'm going to add year as my columns. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab revenue. And you can see over here on the left that my month short is still alphabetical. One thing that I forgot to do in the previous video was just to go click on my month short video 
and add a sort by column of month num, which is just you know one for January, two for February, three for March, and so on. I'm gonna go ahead and tell Power BI that I wanna sort my month short column by month num. That fixes that problem for me. And I'm, while I'm here, I might as well go ahead and do the same thing for my spelled out month, which is January, February, March, etc. Might as well go ahead and do the same thing for that column. So I also wanna sort month by month num. But now as we go over here, you can really see what I'm talking about. We don't want to just calculate 2023 sales compared to 2022 sales, because then it's gonna look like, you know, wow, we're, our sales are much lower in 2023. Uh, when we're not really comparing apples to apples here, 2022 is already finished. 2023 still has three months to go. If you look, you know, at a month to month basis, you can just, you know, spot check that 2023 sales have been higher every single month. So it looks like we're actually having a really good year. But if we didn't compare apples to apples by comparing year to date, as opposed to just year, it might look like 2023 sales are struggling when actually they've been pretty good so far. So we can go ahead and leave this here just for illustration purposes and to sort of spot check ourselves. But I'm first going to go ahead and open up my second measures table and go to my placeholder to measure. And I'm going to replace this with a measure that is year to date revenue. And I'm just going to use the built-in DAX function total YTD, which is year to date. And I'm going to point this at my revenue measure, which I already calculated in the previous video. Uh, it's just, you know, the sum of revenue of the revenue column from our sales table. And for my date column, I'm going to use my dates table. And this is going to calculate our total year to date revenue. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop this over here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this card. I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down just a little bit. The text is really large. I'm going to go ahead and set the display units to none. This is showing that I have forgotten to format this measure. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on YTD revenue, add commas and make this a currency. That's fine for now. And I'm also just gonna go ahead and copy this while we create our next measure, which is revenue for the same period last year. And so I'm gonna call this previous YTD revenue, or in other words, the year-to-date revenue for 2022 that runs through the same span of time, or January through September. Now, I'm reasonably sure that this is not going to give me the right answer. And if it doesn't, I'm going to show you how to correct it and explain why this isn't working. But let's go ahead and give it a shot. And let's calculate our year-to-date revenue, but this time for the same period last year. And I'm also going to use the same date column. And now I'm going to go ahead and replace my YTD revenue in the second card with my previous YTD revenue. And as expected, you can see it's not working correctly. Currently, I've got, you know, seven point, almost five million dollars as all of 22 revenue. And this is what is showing in my previous YTD revenue card. And so, you know, let's go ahead and see what it should be. You know, if we back out December, November and October, we should be seeing 5.3 million here instead of the full 7 point, uh, you know, 4, 8 million that we're actually showing. And the reason for that is if I go back to my date table, I'm reasonably sure that I made one mistake in that, and that is that my date table goes all the way through 2023. So since I am referencing my date column in my date table for that total YTD function, my, that DAX function, as far as Power BI is concerned, YTD is December 31st, 2023, instead of uh, September 30th, 2023, which is where our data actually stops. So I'm going to need to apply a filter to my date table to limit my the 2023 dates in my date table to where my actual sales data ends, which is approximately seven, September 30th, 2023. 
So this is no big deal. What we're going to do real quickly is we're going to head over to our date table and we're going to add a column, not a measure. And this column is going to be sales dates only, or you can just call it, um, you know, sales data cap. It really doesn't matter what we call this column. What we want it to do is limit our date table to just the dates that are in our sales data, or at the very least less than the last date in our sales table so that we can calculate this year to date formula correctly. And so all we're going to do is we're going to do a simple if statement where if the date in this date column is less than or equal to the max date from our sales table, then one else zero. Now that we have that, we're going to go back over to our date column and make sure that it's working correctly. And if I scroll all the way down, at some point I should see these ones swap over to zeros. And here you can see September 30th, I go from one to zero. That should align with the maximum sales date in our sales table, which you can see is September 30th, 2023. So this is going to help us make sure that we're calculating that YTD calculation correctly. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and take the sales data cap column that I created. I'm going to apply it to the entire report. So I'm going to say sales data cap is one. I'm going to apply that filter immediately. You can see that my previous YTD revenue is now working correctly. And I'm just going to hide that. I wouldn't want any users to be able to play with this filter or turn it off because I know that it could break my YTD logic. So I'm just going to lock it and I'm going to hide it so that only I would see it in Power BI Desktop. If I put this report online, nobody would know that this filter is here. And now I can pretty well just forget about it because even though I do have a date table that runs through the end of 2023, as far as my front end is concerned, my data only runs through September 30th, 2023. So I've got that. I've got my YTD revenue and my previous y YTD revenue. Now, someone who is using this report is probably going to be interested in seeing the year over year difference between those YTD revenue formulas. So I'm just going to add another calculation here where I divide YTD revenue by previous YTD revenue and I subtract one to get my year over year difference. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that in here. I'm going to add, I'm going to turn this into a card. You can see once again that my brand new uh, DAX function is not formatted correctly. So let's click on year over year difference. Let's turn this into a percentage. And typically, you know, most companies will only show one decimal point instead of two. Um, you know, in some companies, they may only show no decimal points and they would just be perfectly happy showing, you know, only only 31 percent. Uh, you know, I'm going to leave it as 30.9 percent. You know, this can vary by company, but by and large for uh, percentages and decimals, I use just one decimal place. And uh, if I'm being honest for dollars while we're on the subject, I typically don't show any decimal points at all because... Let's be honest, when you're talking about 6.962 million, that 27 cents isn't very meaningful. So now I've got all of that. I can go ahead and get rid of this table because I'm pretty sure that everything is calculating correctly now. Let's go ahead and move these cards into the approximate locations where I think they will be in the report. And let's go ahead and add a line chart here that is going to help us visualize that year-to-date revenue difference. So all I'm going to do here, this, I'm going to keep this line chart very, very simple. I'm going to add month short to my x-axis, and I'm going to add year to my legend, and I'm going to grab my original revenue calculation and add that to the y-axis. And this just helps visualize that year-over-year year difference so that you can see that for any given month, 
you know, year over year sales in 2023 have been considerably higher than 2022. Although it might be interesting to see if that continues to be the, the, uh, the case, given this fairly large sp spike that we see in October, November, December. So it looks like last year Q4 sales were very high. But, you know, it's I, I doubt that that's going to be too meaningful. Overall, 2023 sales have been very, very strong compared to the previous year. So we're just going to leave this visual here. That tells a pretty, uh, you know, compelling story about how sales are going. But what this performance report is missing right now and what this doesn't really do a great job of capturing because it's filtered by month is it doesn't really do a great job of showing our overall progress towards some kind of a target. So let's go ahead and add a, another uh, uh, measure here. We're going to call this running total revenue. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to be a very similar line chart, but we're going to calculate running totals where each value gets added on to all of the previous values so that we can more easily track year-to-date progress, progress against some kind of goal. So let's go ahead and calculate this as revenue. We're going to use our same revenue measure and we're going to calculate this for all the dates between the start of the year and the end of the given year. And I'm just going to copy my line chart here. I'm going to drag it over here. If you want to space things out just a little bit differently to make room for everything, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now I'm going to add my running total revenue to my line chart here so that it's much easier to track year-to-date sales over time. I can now see that come December 2022, I ended at around $7.5 you know, million. As of September 2023, I'm at $6.962 million. And you can even see in 2022 that $5.3 million. Both of these numbers that you're seeing in the tooltip align with what I've got over here. So that's just further confirmation that everything's working correctly. This can also be a really good place to go ahead and since we've got some real estate, copy over these cards. Again, we can touch up the spacing and the aesthetics later on. For now, I'm, I'm interested in, a I'm, I'm okay with having a little bit of repetition here. I'm actually just going to leave for now the same YTD revenue card here, but I'm going to add a new measure over here where I'm just going to hard code in a goal. And, you know, we're already at... Uh, you know, almost $7 million. We've got another um, quarter or so to go. So let's go ahead and just set a target of $8.5 million. I'm going to go ahead and drag my goal into the second card. I'm going to format it as currency. And next, I'm going to create a measure that is progress towards goal. And this calculation's pretty easy. It's just going to be my year-to-date revenue divided by my goal. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this into place. You can see that currently it's not formatted correctly. No big deal. Uh, Power BI automatically converted it to a currency. It's actually a percentage. And we're just going to drop this down to one decimal place. And to make this even a clearer visual of our progress, we need to add this goal line to our line chart over here. So let's go ahead and just click on this magnifying glass for this line chart. And we're going to add a constant y-axis line. And we're going to reference using this conditional formatting, we're going to reference the goal here that we created so that if we decided to come back later and change this goal, we can update this y-axis line that we're adding automatically without having to go in and update this visual. All, all we have to do is just update the goal measure. 
So let's go ahead and open up our conditional formatting. It's already configured to look for a field value, but you know that can, if that's confusing, you know, asking for a field like a column from our data set, just know that we can use a measure here. So I'm gonna open up our measures to table and I'm going to find my goal measure and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and immediately that raises this y-axis constant line to uh, eight and a half million dollars, which is our target. And now we can add a data label to it. I'm gonna go ahead and change the name up from y-axis constant line to goal. And I'm going to specify that I want to see both the name and the data value. Looks like I can delete that uh, colon that I added because there's already a colon. Now you can see goal, eight and a half million dollars. So we can see we've still got some, you know, ground to cover, but at least we have a visual here that's just kind of tracking every single day as new sales revenue rolls in, you know, how we're progressing towards that eight and a half million goal. Now, you know, if I were leading a sales team or if I were the head of a company, I would want to be able to look at this gap and know, hey, are we going to be able to close that gap? In one, in one of the uh, other videos that I'm going to film here in just a moment, I'm going to actually walk you through how to add some more complex DAX logic to actually, you know, kind of project out whether or not we're really on track to hit that eight and a half million goal or not. But for now, to keep this uh, initial uh, development of this page simple, I'm just going to leave this as is. So now we've got, you know, uh, most of our important visuals up here. I'm going to actually drag and grab all of these and just move them up a little bit so that they're taking up roughly half of our visualization space. And I'm going to go ahead and ask myself, okay, what do I want to do with the other half that's left down here? And with the rest of this space, you know, what I really want to do is, uh, you know, maybe start to highlight some areas of of concern or uh, areas where we're doing really, really well. So looking at the rest of the data set, you know, I've got my products here and I've got my stores, you know, so maybe I want to know which product groups are performing, you know, really well compared to the previous year or which ones are underperforming. Maybe I want to know which stores are performing really well or overperforming. This is an area where we can start to kind of focus on some of that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a bar chart here. And since I don't have product level goals or store level goals, I'm going to use this year over year difference to sort of spotlight areas that are overperforming or underperforming. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this bar chart is I'm just going to open up my products. I'm going to grab product category, drop that into my Y axis, and I'm going to grab my year over year difference and add that to my X axis so that I can start visualizing, hey, it looks like, you know, electronics may be underperforming. It looks like they've fallen uh, almost 28% year over year, whereas arts and crafts just appears to be, you know, maybe growing gangbusters. So let's go ahead and pull this out a little bit. The reason that I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and add one more thing here is because arts and crafts, while it's up 251.9%, for all I know, arts and crafts is a very, very small seller. Uh, maybe we don't make a lot of revenue off of that, so while it's grown, it's not really going to help us hit our target all that much. Whereas electronics, the fact that it's down by 28% may be huge. It may be a you know huge... Um, uh, concern for the company if electronics is where we're typically selling uh, the most toys. So let me go ahead and just add the same visual, but I'm going to delete year over year difference. And I'm going to add my year to date revenue to the x axis. And now I can see that, okay, arts and crafts tend to be a pretty big seller. That's probably why overall revenue is looking pretty, pretty good. And typically, electronics are among our least selling uh, or lowest selling products. So the fact that it's down year over year, maybe it doesn't concern us that much. But that's why you always want to make sure that you're providing as much context as possible when you're designing your data visuals. And the next thing that I'm going to add is just one more visual since I've got some space. And that is going to focus on our stores and our store location. 
so that we can see, okay, overall store location sales uh, are up year over year across the board. Airports, downtown, commercial, residential, everything's looking really, really solid. So now I've, you know, got, I, I think the, the start of a very strong sales performance report, I'm going to go ahead and now turn my attention into making all of this look amazing by just reformatting everything and uh, making sure that I'm calling proper attention to the visuals that really matter on this page. So that somebody who's opening this report page, this report up for the first time, knows what to do with this information and they immediately know, hey, are sales, uh, you know, doing well or are they underperforming? So now that we've got all of our visuals already staged on our first page of our toy company sales performance report, now comes the fun part of just formatting everything and making it look amazing. So the first thing that we're gonna do just to save ourselves some time is I'm going to go ahead and just select all six of my cards here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that they're all the same font and size. Don't want, There's no point having my numbers be too large. I don't really need them taking up all that much space. And I'm just gonna go, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop these down to about 26 size. Once I have my font sizes and everything determined, I'm gonna go over to my general settings and I'm gonna try to tighten these up a little bit and get rid of the white space that you see on either side of most of my numbers. By carving back some of this white space, I'm going to give myself the ability to make my line charts a little bit larger and hopefully stretch these out so that my uh, x-axis month labels aren't uh, kind of clustered like they are right now. I would like for them to look like this instead of being, you know, kind of diagonal. So let's go ahead and get as much white space taken care of as we can. I've got all six of my cards selected. I'm going to go over to general, drop down my properties, and I'm just going to start making these a little bit narrower. I'm going to see if I can get this down to about 200. That's looking really good. And let's go ahead and see if we can get rid of some height as well. And maybe scrunch these down to about 90. I like, personally, nice round numbers. And now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of drag these in a little bit more. And, you know, you always want to have a little bit of space between everything so that every all of your visuals have room to breathe. You also want to make sure that you know, all of your line charts, that everything is aligned. You'll notice as I drag these, the sort of red uh, guidelines that appear, that's exactly what we want. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of drag these. You can see that I still need some space between these visuals. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both of my line charts and I'm going to get rid of uh, some of the information that I don't really need here. Like I don't really need my x-axis labeled as month short. Anyone who's going to, uh, to look at these charts is going to understand that these are months. It's obvious, so my axis titles aren't helping me there. As far as uh, revenue goes, I can also drop that label and just add something to my title of my chart, letting people know that these are tracking revenue. That will allow me to probably make these as small as I need them to be. And now we're going to go ahead and select four of these visuals. And I'm just going to go up here to my format options and I'm going to distribute these horizontally, which is going to ensure that the open space between all of these visuals is perfectly equal. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, uh, with the space that I've opened up, I'm going to make my bar charts down here also just a little bit larger, help them occupy that space. And I'm just kind of eyeballing to make sure that the space between my bar charts down here is roughly equal to the space between all of my other visuals here, just to make everything look nice and clean. Now, 
before I start, you know, getting into my formatting, I just want to kind of spot check everything and ask myself, is this really the order that I want all of these visuals? And I'm kind of, you know, thinking, well, really, you know, if I were coming into this, the first thing that I would be interested in is, are we selling more than last year? Which is what this year over year difference tells me. So I'm deciding, you know what, I'm actually going to reorder these. I'm going to bring this year over year difference up to the top. I'm going to go ahead and grab these cards, head up to format, and I'm going to, dis to distribute them vertically. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my progress towards goal. That's probably the second most important uh, card on this page is are we on progress to hit our goal. And I'm going to run with this instead of the way that I originally had everything staged. Now I'm going to go ahead and select all of my cards and I'm going to go to my general settings. I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to go ahead and grab a really dark blue here. If you want, you can even let a little bit of the background color blend bleed through by playing with your transparency settings. Let's see how that looks. Honestly, I can barely see any difference. So let's go ahead and use maybe even one of our darker blues here. Let's see how that looks. Maybe feeling that a little bit more. So with all six of our cards selected, I'm now gonna turn on my visual border and I'm gonna use some rounded corners here. I'm gonna grab the same blue I'm going to go up here to my labels and I need to decide what color my labels are going to be. And I'm just going to make my labels, you know, let, let's just play with some different options. Not really feeling the blue, you know, not really any need to have color there. You know, that light gray I think will work for now. And let's see what our call out values look like if they're white. Overall, not bad. I'm just going to leave that as is for now. And, you know, some other shortcuts that we can use here are to take or use the format painter brush to copy over, you know, some of our formatting to the other visuals here. You'll notice in particular that since on the card, I really only played with the background by giving it that kind of dark blue semi-transparent background color and the uh, rounded border colors, that that's really all that got copied over here. But, you know, using the Format Painter does save me a little bit of time on the, you know, just initial formatting of all of my visuals. And you can immediately see, I mean, like it makes just, you know, everything on this page, you know, uh, look very, very clean, crisp. Everything's easy to read because we've got this dark background. We've got a lot of contrast here. You know, uh, there's still a lot of work to do on the formatting, but just right out of the gate, you know, it took me just a couple of minutes to, to make this, you know, look, you know, like a, like a pretty, pretty good report already. So now let's just go through each visual and make sure that we're calling out exactly what's most important for each visual. So first, I'm going to start with this line chart here. And I'm going to just kind of punch up some of the colors uh, that are uh, essential to sort of interpreting this. First, let's go ahead and give this a, a chart a meaningful title. So we'll call this year over year revenue by month, just to remove all doubt of what we're looking at. I'm gonna go ahead and give make this title nice and vibrant by picking a white color. If you want to, you know, turn on italics or something, that's fine. Let's go ahead and adjust our legend up here. Let's make the text white as well. Let's go ahead and adjust our month labels on our x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and pick den as my font. And looks like I can go up to about 10, which is fine. And I really don't need my months to stand out 
too much too much i mean people are going to just glance down here and understand you know which month we're looking at and by and large for this visual you know we're looking at the overall you know comparison and that is that 2023 is doing better than 2022 so i'm going to brighten up my months just a little bit with that gray and i'm and because revenue is really the most important part here i'm going to make my y axis those revenue numbers really pop. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to den font as well. And I'm gonna punch up the font on my Y axis just a little bit. And if you wanted to play with zeroing out your Y axis, you know, now would be a good time to go ahead and do that. I've also got these, you know, bright and grid lines in the background that are maybe just a little bit distracting. So let's go ahead and go to my grid line options. Currently, they're this kind of light gray. Let's see if we can get away with a really dark blue. And you can see that's almost impossible to see, even if we increase the width quite a bit. So it looks like I'm going to have to go a little bit brighter. That's fine. I'm trying to find that sweet spot where the grid lines in the background are just barely visible. And so we're going to run with this, actually. The next thing that we want to do to this visual is we want to make sure that all eyes immediately go to 2023. 2022 is really just there for illustrative purposes, but that's in the past. There's not a whole lot that we can do about 2022 revenue. So I'm going to go to my lines here, and I'm going to start by playing with my 2023 series. And I'm going to make this, I'm going to, I'm going to steal the same kind of tealish green that I'm using in my layout just for consistency purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and punch up the stroke width so that, you know, my eyes immediately go to the thicker or more vibrant line here. If you wanted to cheat a little bit and just go slightly brighter, you know, you're, you're going to be just fine. If you'll notice, you know, the actual theme color that I inputted is a little bit darker than this kind of middle tone here. When you're using a dark tone, it's totally fine to go a little bit lighter just to make it a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to go just a touch lighter and... I'm going to now change my 2022 line. I'm actually fine with that blue, but you know, if you wanted to kind of push it to the background a little bit, you could change it from a solid line to a dashed line. And if you wanted to play with the, the stroke width just a little bit, this is just going to help ensure that anybody who's looking at this immediately goes to 2023 versus 2022. And if you want to go back to your legend, and change the style from markers to lines, you can do that. Or line and markers, either one's fine. Overall, this is looking much better to me. And if you wanna go ahead and cheat a little bit again by grabbing the format painter and bringing over, you know, your, your same formatting over here, that's totally fine. But the only thing that we are kind of losing now is progress towards our goal. So let's go back to our y-axis constant line settings. Let's go ahead and make this line nice and vibrant by changing it to white and dropping the transparency down. You know, if you even want to experiment with some different color pops, now would be the time to do it. Let's change it from dashed to dotted and see how that looks. And let's make sure that people can easily read and discern our data label. If you want to draw a stronger connection between the fact that this is where we are and this is where we're going, you can even borrow some of the same green here to kind of visually indicate that these two things are related. And of course, we want to make sure that we give this an intuitive title as well. So let's go ahead and drop down our title options. And let's call this year-to-date revenue progress towards goal. So we've got our line charts figured out. They're looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing that we are going to do is we're just going to call additional attention to these two cards since they're kind of working hand in hand with the line charts. I mean, ultimately, this year over year difference, this almost 31% is really capturing the delta between tw the 2023 line and the 2022 line. 
just as this visual is really capturing where we are today and where, where our goal is and how much progress we've made. So let's go ahead and help that pop a little bit more by grabbing our two cards here. And let's go ahead and update our background effects to use the same green color here that we're using for our color pops. And if you want to play a little bit more with the card formatting just to continue to sort of offset these, no problem. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like if we give it a dark kind of gray uh, category label. Overall, that's looking pretty good. Now we can turn our attention to our bar charts here. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab all three of these. I'm going to go ahead and make some of the same bulk changes here. First, I'm going to go to general. Anytime you notice that you have these, um, you know, kind of warning messages, it's because fonts are being dynamically changed by Power BI, uh, or in other words, like the, the size of the fonts is being, you know, kind of shrunken to sort of fit the space that you have uh, imposed on the visual. We can turn that off and uh, kind of regain control over all of the formatting options by just going up here to general going to our properties, dropping down advanced options, and turning off the responsive setting. And then when we go back, we notice that all of those warning messages are gone. Now we're just going to quickly click through, and we're going to select DIN for our font for our y-axis. We're going to go ahead and choose white for our font color. We're going to go ahead and punch up the sizes just a little bit more. I think we can go pretty comfortably to 11. You'll notice that there's, you know, some of the longer values here, like uh, sports and outdoors is getting cut off. That's easy to fix while we're in our y-axis settings. We're going to go ahead and just adjust our max area width by dragging this toggle out. That's going to kind of move where our y-axis starts so that we can actually read all of the labels very easily. And now, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my data labels since these bar charts are so small. You can see my data labels look uh, atrocious right now. I don't know why they're so huge, but we're going to go ahead and shrink those back down. I'm going to select DIN as my font. I'm going to turn on overflow text, and I'm going to go ahead and just shrink these down. Again, I have no idea why the uh, font sizes were, were so huge. But that's really more what I'm going for. Might try punching it up just one more. I'm going to turn off overflow. Notice I was having some trouble sort of getting this negative 27.8 to fit exactly where I wanted it. But now that we have every single bar labeled, that makes the labels on our X axis redundant because people can just go up here and they can read the values easily. So I'm going to go actually turn off my X axis. No, I no longer need it. Uh, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to retitle all of my charts. So let's call the first one year to date revenue by product category. Call it the next one year over year difference by product category. And the next one will be year over year difference by store location. And I'm just going to multi-select everything. I'm going to change my text color for my titles to white. I'm going to shrink it down to 13, which is what I'm using up here. I'm going to italicize my titles. Again, it's just kind of a personal preference. I'm going to go up to format and I'm going to distribute these horizontally. You can see the middle uh, visual just moved to the left a little bit. That's just to make sure that my spacing is as perfect as possible. Whoops, <laughs> as I accidentally dragged one out of place, I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. And now we're going to go through very quickly and we're going to go ahead and see what these, how these charts look if we apply a little bit of conditional formatting here. So I'm going to use the same kind of teal that I'm using up here in other areas to pop out some color. You know, if you want to get a little bit fancier with your conditional formatting, now's a great place to do it. Let's go ahead and see, you know, what uh, this looks like if we go ahead and open up our conditional formatting and only pop the highest values here. You know, maybe we can let the other values, you know, kind of just be sort of blue tone. 
Oop, I was counting the product category instead of the revenue. Rookie mistake. Let's go ahead and grab year-to-date revenue as the measure that we want to conditionally format. And let's see how that looks. Pretty good. Uh, Power BI will automatically sort of uh, create a, a scalable legend for you. I'm personally not a fan of it. And honestly, uh, it, it's, you know, kind of your preference on what you want. I don't like the legend. I'm just going to turn it off. The only uh, reason I'm using the color pop here is just to bring attention to toys, you know, being the top selling category here. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for my year over year difference going to go ahead and open up my conditional formatting and here I'm going to add uh, a little bit of additional flavor here. Uh, I'm actually going to set a custom value of zero for the middle point of my uh, scale. I'm going to set my highest value to uh, the sort of uh, teal color that I was picking and for anything under zero for my lowest values I'm gonna, I want those to be orange so that they'll pop a little bit. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I think I made exactly the same mistake again. Yes, I did. So let's go ahead and set this to year over year difference. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my legend. And what this is doing is it's now highlighting arts and crafts as the product category that has uh, had the highest year over year difference in sales. And I'm using that pop of orange to really, you know, kind of pull your vision down here so that you're going to ask yourself, well, what's going on with electronics? You know, why are sales down 27.8%? And over here, even though currently all of my values are exactly, you know, they're all over 0%. In other words, uh, by store location, airport, downtown, commercial, residential, they've all seen increases in year over year difference. I'm going to use the same logic for my conditional formatting. So I'm going to set my middle value to zero so that everything less than zero is orange. Everything around zero is kind of blue. And then for my highest values, those get the, the kind of teal color pop. Let's go ahead and apply. And you can see everything is roughly the same color. And that is because, again, everything is fairly similar in growth. Everything's grown between about 25 and 38%. So I'm fine with that the way that it is. If you want to do one more thing to just kind of make this look a little bit cleaner, you can adjust the padding between the bars here by clicking on bars for your formatting, going to your spacing options, and bumping these up to about 30, you know, maybe even 50, depending on your comfort, you know, just to, uh, you know, make these bars a little bit, um, you know, less sort of clustered, clustered together and make the entire chart just a little bit easier to read. I'm going to drop that down to about 40. And now we're effectively done with our first page. You know, if we wanted to give these line charts up here a little bit more room to breathe, I think that we actually can go a little bit smaller with our width. Let's see if I can get these down to 190. Let's try 180. Yeah, no problems there at all. What this allows us to do is just make our uh, line charts, which are you know, probably the most meaningful thing that people are gonna be wanting to see here. Make those just a little bit larger here. I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit more. And I'm gonna move all of these cards over so that this chart has plenty of room to breathe and they're roughly the same size. Okay, so now we're officially done with our first tab. We can call this first tab sales performance. And now we're ready to play with some of the other data sets in here. Most of our measures have already been written. So let's see what we can do with some of the other uh, products or some of the other uh, data tables in this report, such as products and stores.